chapter 5 of Ramayana's Kishkinda Kanda, Sugriva has doubts. Apada Mahartaram, Dataram, Sarvasampadam, Lokabiramam, Shri Ramam, Bhuyo, Bhuyo, Namamiham. Sugriva had a shamefaced look on his face. He did not know that his words were so transparent, nor did he realize till he spoke how astute Lakshmana was. He was certainly afraid of Vali and he did not want to make sure. He did want to make sure that Rama was strong enough to fulfill his promise to Sugriva. He said, You should not misunderstand me. Please do not think that I have no faith in Rama and his prose or in his words. I have but then the fear I have of Wali is so great, so terrible that I am dubious about the success of the task Rama has undertaken. Once my brother pierced these seven sala trees with seven arrows one by one. Just one arrow was enough to pierce one tree. I have thought of two tests for Rama. If he can also pierce each of these trees with an arrow and if he can lift up the skeleton of Dundubi with one foot and fling it to a distance of a hundred bows, I will be certain that Rama is more powerful than Wali and I can be sure that Wali is as good as dead. Sugriva stood still for a few moments and turning to Rama, he said, Rama, as I am told you, as I told you before, my brother is very powerful. Asuras are afraid to meet him in a single encounter and he has never been defeated in any fight as yet. Even the Devas have been amazed at his feats and all these many successes have made him arrogant and constant fear of him has made me unhappy. I have found a good friend in you and I have come to you for succor. Please do not for a moment think that I am testing your strength or that I am trying to insult you by asking you to display your ability. I have not seen you before and it is my fear which makes me act thus. Rama listened to the words of Sugriva and with a sweet smile he said, it is but natural for you to be doubtful about my accomplishments. That is, as far as fighting is concerned, I will try to convince you. Rama walked up to the skeleton of Dundabi and lifting it up with his toe, he threw it to a distance of 10 yojanas. Sugriva was quite impressed, but not enough. His doubting mind said, Rama, when Wali threw this body away, it was much heavier, filled as it was with blood and flesh. Now it is just a framework of bones. And again, he did it when he was tired and as for you, you are fresh and full of great enthusiasm. Even this feat, amazing as it is, does not make me quite sure of my future. If only you can pierce one of these Sala trees with a single arrow, I can be certain of your ascendancy over Wali. Please have pity on me and forgive me for my doubting nature, but I must make sure of everything. Please, Rama, string your bow and with an arrow pierce one of these seven Sala trees. I will be satisfied. I will know that then you are the most, you are the best among men that you are among archers, what the sun is among the luminaries, what Himavan is among the mountains, what the lion is among the animals. Rama took up his bow in his hand. He strung it and then he fixed an arrow to it. He pulled it far and then released it. He had aimed at a sala tree. The arrow glittering with its tip of gold streaked through the air, pierced all the seven sala trees and entered the earth. After splitting the ground, it came back to the quiver of Rama and rested there. The five monkeys were amazed at the feet and they were jumping in the air because of the excitement. Sugriva was jubilant. He spoke again and again about the certainty of the death of Wali. 
his doubts had been cleared and to make up for his impertinence in doubting Rama, he praised him in glowing terms. He could not contain himself. He said, Rama, let us not waste time. You must kill Wally today and rid my heart of the thorn which has been lodged there for so many years. Rama embraced Sugriva and with a smile at Lakshmana he said, Let us go to Kishkinda now. Sugriva, you go first and summon your brother to fight with you. They went fast towards Kishkinda. In the dense forest, Rama and Lakshmana concealed themselves behind some trees and stood waiting. Sugriva was dressed to fight. He went to the gateway of Kishkinda and summoned Wali with a terrible roar. Jai Shri Ram. Shri Rama Rama Rame Tirame Rame Manorame Sahasranama Tatulyam Rama Nama Varanane Om Shri Rama Arpanamasta. Chapter 6 of Ramayana's Kishkinda Kanda The Killing of Wali Apada Mahataram Dataram Sarvasampadam Lokati Ramam Shri Ramam Bhuyo Bhuyo Namamya At first Wali could not believe his ears. He had never thought that his brother could summon up courage enough to fight with him. But here he was and obviously he wanted to fight. Wali laughed at first and anger gave place to amusement. He laughed for a while and said, How dare this Sugriva challenge me? Has he gone mad? He thought for a while and he decided that Sugriva had to be taught a lesson. He had the audacity to call out to him and it was obvious that the roar was a war cry. Wali came out of the city and he looked like the sun poised on the western hill just before sunset. He rushed towards Sugriva and there was a terrible fight which ensued between the two brothers. Sugriva was no mean fighter and Wali was powerful. The duel was fearful. It was like the two planets Buddha and Angaraka, namely Mercury and Mars, which were confronting each other. The brothers used their fists and each was like the Vajra of Indra. Rama fixed an arrow to his bow and turned it towards the fighting pair. But they were so much alike, he did not know who was who. They were like the Ashwini twins and Rama could not distinguish between the two. Sugriva found that he was weakening and Wali had hit him all over the body. He was bleeding and not finding Rama anywhere. So he ran towards Rishyamuka. Wali was pursuing him and he had to stop when Sugriva entered the forest near the ashrama of Matanga. Wali shouted after him, You have managed to escape alive. Do not taunt me again. Rama, Lakshmana and Hanuman went to where Sugriva was. His face was cast down and he spoke in a piteous voice. You displayed your vow to me. You asked me to summon Wally to a duel. When I did it, you stood watching me being beaten up and you did not kill Wally. Why? If you had told me at the beginning that you had no wish to do so, I would not have gone near my brother and asked for trouble. Look at me now. He was on the point of weeping and Rama said, My dear friend, please do not be angry with me. Listen to me when I tell you why I did not shoot my arrow to kill Wali. In form and feature, face and limb, in gait and in the method of fighting, you are both so much alike that it was not possible for me to distinguish between the two of you. Your valor was equal to that of your brother and even your voices were alike. I was not able to shoot because of this similarity between you both. I did not want to kill the wrong brother and kill the friendship which has sprung up between you and me. I did not dare make a mistake. My arrow will never return without drinking the life of the one it is aimed at and I would have committed a tragic mistake if it had hurt you instead of your brother. 
It is a most heinous crime to kill one who has asked for succor, and that might have happened if it had, if I had been hasty. Come, shake off this depression and go again to fight. You will certainly see Wali dead. Lakshmana, pull out the creeper Gajapushpi and place it round the neck of Sugriva. I will then be able to make out who Wali is. Lakshmana took the creeper which was full of flowers and twisting it into a semblance of a garland, he placed it round the neck of Sugriva. Reassured by the words of Rama, Sugriva walked again towards Kishkinda. He walked ahead while Lakshmana and Rama followed with Hanuman to accompany him. Behind them walked the other three monkeys, Nala, Neela and Thar, the commander-in-chief. They went back to the same place where they had concealed themselves and Sugriva summoned Wali once again to fight. Before he went to the gates of the city, Rama had assured Sugriva that he would certainly kill Wali this time. Wali heard Sugriva and naturally he was furious. He could not bear to hear the voice of Sugriva calling out to him again. He jumped out of his seat and with long strides began to walk towards where the call came from. His beloved wife Tara felt very nervous. She said, My lord, give up this anger against your brother. If you wish to, fight with him tomorrow. I feel afraid of this hurry with which you have set out to fight with him. Just a while back, he came and fought with you. He was well punished by you and sent back. He has come again which is surprising. It worries me. You should not be indifferent to the cause of this sudden courage of Sugriva. Something tells me that he has someone to assist him or else he would never be able to face you alone. He is very clever and he could not he would not have come unless he is sure of victory. Angada told me something which comes to my mind now. He had been to the forest and his spies told him that two princes, Rama and Lakshmana, the sons of Dasharatha, have come to the forest and that they have made friendship with Sugriva. I feel that Sugriva is assisted by Rama and I know how great a warrior Rama is. If he is against you, no one can save you. Sugriva has found refuge in him and Rama is famed for helping those who seek his aid. He is famed in all the three worlds. His prowess is unparalleled. He will destroy his enemies. He is like the fire at the end of the Yuga when he is angry. He is the protector of the helpless. He is the home of all virtues and he is wise. I think it is inadvisable on your part to antagonize Rama. Please listen to me and take my advice. Do not fight with your brother. Go to him. Make friends with him and take him into your heart. Crown him as the Yuvaraja. You will thus make friends with Rama too. Cast away this hatred and give place to affection in your heart. Your quarrel has lasted long enough and you should now make it up with him. He is your brother. He is valiant and it is good for you to do as I say. Take my advice and do not seek enmity with Rama. I am afraid for you. Her words fell on deaf ears. Wali was too angry with Sugriva to think of him as his brother. He looked at Thara and said, How can, how can I bear to hear this arrogant call of that coward? When I am challenged, it is not befitting that a hero like me should avoid fighting and make friends with enemies. I will be called a coward. As for your worry about Rama, there is no need for it, Tara. Rama is famed for ever following the path of righteousness and he had never once swerved from the path of Dharma. He will never act contrary to it. Go back to the inner chambers, Tara. I will punish this audacious brother of mine and come back to you. I will only punish him and I assure you, I will not kill him. After some more beatings from my fist, he will run away and I do not think he will come back to fight. Tara embraced Wali with tears in her eyes. 
praying for his victory, she entered her chambers with slow and dragging steps. Wali waited for her to go and then he came out to fight with Sugriva the second time. He stepped out and looked around for a sight of his brother. Sugriva was there and they were locked in a duel. Each beat the other with his fists. Wali was using his fists while Sugriva uprooted a sala tree and beat up Wali with it. The fight between the two was fierce and for a while there was only the sound of their groans, their angry words and their deep sighs. Sugriva, however, was gradually showing signs of weakening. The weariness was visible. He persisted, however, and did not run away as he did the previous time. Rama was watching the fight. Perhaps he hoped that Sugriva would be able to defeat Wali. He was holding the bow in his left hand and it had been strung already. Rama now saw that Sugriva was not faring well, that he was losing and Rama took up an arrow out of his quiver. He held it in his hand for a long moment. Perhaps he was thinking of the stigma which would cling to his name because of the act he was planning. He fixed the arrow to the bowstring. He pulled the string and dispatched the arrow towards Wali. The noise made by the bowstring was frightening. Even as it was vibrating, the arrow, glowing like a streak of lightning, sudden like a thunderbolt, entered the chest of Wali and stayed there. Wali fell to the ground, hurt by Rama's arrow. He fell like the Indra Dhanush on Purnima day in the month of Ashwayuja when it is pulled to the ground after the festival of Indra. Om Shanti 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 Jai Shri Ram Shri Rama Rama Rame Tirame Rame Manurame Sahasranama Tattulyam Rama Nama Varanane Om Shri Rama Panamasta Chapter 7 of Ramayana's Kishkinda Kanda Wali's Censure Apada Mahartaram Dataram Sarvasampadam Lokabi Ramam Shri Ramam Bhuyo Bhuyo Namamiham With a single arrow, Rama had hurt Wali and he was on the ground and he looked like a fallen god. The moment he fell, the kingdom was as forlorn and helpless as the night sky without the moon. He was not looking fatigued nor was there any sign of death in him. His splendor had not faded. His golden garland was brilliant and he was looking glorious with this gift of Indra. He was as beautiful as he was before the fight and the garland made him look like the sunset cloud with an edge of gold. So he lay on the ground. Rama accompanied by Lakshmana, came out of the screen of trees and walked towards Wali, who was like a flame without smoke, like King Yayati who fell to the earth when his punya was all exhausted, like the sun which had fallen on the ground at the end of the yuga. Wali was lying on the ground. Wali, who was the son of Indra, was as proud as Indra and as powerful. Rama approached him and with him went Lakshmana. Wali had regained consciousness and he looked at the approaching figure of the two brothers. He waited for them to come near. Rama stood there, one hand loosely clasping the bow and the other unstringing it. Wali said, I was fighting with my brother. When I was absorbed in fight, I was hit in the chest by an arrow coming from out of nowhere. Tell me, how does it benefit you to fight with an opponent who did not offer you any fight? I had no quarrel with you and yet, hiding behind the trees, you have killed me. To what purpose? Why did you, what did you gain by it? You are the son of an emperor born in a noble family. You are said to have great good and noble qualities. They say you are valiant, generous, righteous. I have heard praises of you. You are indeed a famous personage. 
you are said to be compassionate and you are the home of kindliness and mercy your valor is not of this world you are well acquainted with the rules of conduct and you are said to have observed all the rules of dharma all these years a king should be afraid of committing sinful acts and he should have the senses under control he should have patience and manliness truthfulness and valor should be his ornaments he should punish only those who have offended him when sugriva called me the second time tara warned me about you and i laughed at her fears since i had great faith in your noble birth and your great qualities i was fighting with someone else and i had not encountered you i told her that you would never agree to fight me thus my belief is all wrong i see now you are in adharmi you are like a well covered with grass and therefore is more treacherous than an open well you are a sinner in the guise of a good man and you are like fire covered by ashes i have done you no wrong i did not come to your country and offend you i have not insulted you in any manner why then did you kill me i am a monkey dwelling in the forest and so is sugriva we were fighting our personal fight and you were not in any way challenged by me you took it upon yourself to aim your arrow at me and kill me why you are a kshatriya and you are well versed in all the nuances of dharma you are called the image of dharma and i was deceived by your reputation your righteousness is just a pretense you are a prince rama and we are animals dwelling in the forest fighting over trivial things like a piece of land or a few pieces of gold or a woman are all natural to us how does our quarrel affect you kings have the power to punish or to pardon but they are not expected to misuse their power as for you it seems to me you act only according to your wish and you are prone to be affected by anger you have not followed the rules of conduct set down for a prince a kshatriya irrespective of whether it is right or wrong you have become addicted to the use of the bow and arrow you are not completely righteous nor are you firm in your thinking you are easily swayed by your emotions rama today you have killed me who is innocent this act of yours is cruel and unforgivable when the wise question you about it what will be your explanation i have also been taught the rules of dharma i have been told that one who kills a king one who kills a brahmin a cow one who steals wealth belonging to another one who enjoys hurting animals who does not believe in god who marries when his elder brother is still unmarried who reveals a secret to the world who is avaricious who betrays a trusted friend who lusts after the wife of his preceptor all these will be doomed to dwell in the hell meant for great sinners you may say that a prince has a right to kill an animal as a hunter does but i am a monkey my skin is not of any use as an apparel like the skin of the deer my bones and my hair are not of any use to anyone my flesh is not eaten by men brahmins and kshatriyas are allowed to eat the flesh of women the flesh of animals which have five nails i do not belong to that group if i had listened to the words of warning spoken by my beloved tara i would not have come to this sad end it is a pity that a righteous king like dasharatha should have a son like you this act of yours is against all codes of dharma and i have become the victim of an unrighteous man if you had challenged me and fought with me you would certainly have been defeated by me but like a serpent which creeps under the grass and crawls up to a sleeping man and bites him you have attacked me i know why you have killed me you wish to please sugriva by this act of yours and in return he is to find your lost wife for you if you had approached me first 
I would certainly have brought her from where she is imprisoned and that in a single day. I would have put a noose round the neck of that sinful Ravana and dragged him to your presence. After I am dead, Sugriva will ascend the throne. That is lawful. But your killing of me is unlawful. I ask you, nay, demand of you, that you justify your act and convince me that what you did is right. I am quite willing to listen. The brave Wali, the son of Indra, was in great pain and his voice was growing, groaning, faint as he spoke to Rama. His words had now ceased and he looked at Rama. Rama listened patiently to the accusations of Wali. The monkey's king spoke words which were true to dharma, which were just and which were spoken quite softly. There was no harshness in the voice of Wali when he said these things. Rama looked at Wali for a long moment. He was like the sun whose glory had been dimmed, like a rain cloud which had been emptied of its waters, like fire which had died down. Jai Shri Ram Shri Rama Rama Rame Tirame Rame Manorame Sahasranama Tatulyam Rama Nama Varanane Om Shri Rama Panamast Chapter 8 of Ramayana's Kishkindha Kanda Rama justifies his action Shri Ramaya Rama Badraya Rama Chandraya Vedase Raghunathaya Nathaya Sita Yappataye Namaha After a long pause, Rama spoke deliberately and with words chosen very carefully. He said, You do not seem to know all about Dharma, Artha and Kama. You do not know the nuance of Dharma. You are not fully conversant with the words Dharma, with the word Dharma and yet you dare to accuse me of overstepping the bounds of dharma. Without consulting men who have expert knowledge of dharma, without hearing the views of great preceptors, you accuse me of being an adharmi. This world, this forest with its mountains, its rivers and lakes are all ruled by the kings of the rays of the sun. To punish the inmates of the cities or the forests is the right of the kings of our house. My brother Bharata, who is highly righteous, truthful and straight, is ruling this kingdom. We have followed the path of Dharma and we have been wandering in these forest, forests to see that right is established everywhere. When Bharata is the ruler of a country, where, the, where is the chance for Adharma to raise its head? We are assisting Bharata to rule the world and we have taken it on ourselves the task of punishing those who are in the wrong. You are an adharmi. You are sinful in behavior and you are given to satiating your lust. Anyone who follows the path of dharma knows that the father, the preceptor and the elder brother are to be considered as fathers. I repeat, anyone who follows the path of dharma knows that the father, the preceptor and the elder brother are to be considered as fathers. Your younger brother, who is a good-natured person, should have been treated as a son by you. It is not easy for beings like you to understand the subtleties of the word dharma and its application as understood by us. Only the Atman inside knows what is right and what is not. Like a fool, when he is associated with other fools, is incapable of learning anything, you have, with your companions, fail to learn anything about the code of behavior. Do not accuse me because you are angry with me. I will tell you why I killed you. You ill-treated this brother of yours and captured his wife, Ruma. You have transgressed the rules of dharma, of behavior by taking your brother's wife and I have punished you for it. For one who has overstepped the code of behavior according to dharma as stipulated by the elders, the only punishment is death. Your sin is unforgivable. It has been said that one who looks with lust 
that is daughter his sister or the wife of his brother must be punished and the punishment is death bharata is the monarch and we are his brothers who have been walking in the path of dharma you are outside the pale of dharma how can i overlook your your miss demana however we look at it you are in the wrong and your behavior is punishable sugriva is as dear to me as lakshmana i have sworn to be his life long friend and i have done this since he is a good soul and i have decided to restore his lost kingdom and his wife to him i have promised to do this for him and how can i go back on my promise you must realize that i did not wrong you in any way my friend has been quite righteous and this is a duty i owed him you would have acted the same way if you had been placed similarly o king enough of this self pity my action is within the law we are not prone to act as we please i will give you another explanation for my action you object to my hiding behind the trees and shooting an arrow at you remember you are an animal and we rajarshis will always kill wild animals which are harmful to the society which are harmful to the safety of society of humanity by trapping them in pits by spreading nets for them with several types of traps and with bows and arrows shot from behind trees or from the tops of trees whether you stood in front of me or not i consider you as one of the wild animals and i treated you as such i do not think i acted wrongly wali thought of the words spoken by rama defending his action and he was convinced that rama had done no wrong he stopped finding fault with rama and he realized the truth underlying rama's arguments he folded his palms together and said lord of lords i abide by what you say it is not meet for a lowly being like me to argue with one like you because of my ignorance as to your true nature harsh words were spoken by me i pray that you will forgive me for them you are well versed in dharma and its many nuances and as you say i know very little you are bent on doing good to the world the act and the reason prompting the, that act are both known to you and they are always right they should not be questioned bless me before i go rama and forgive me wali's voice was choked with tears and he looked at rama with eloquent eyes he then said i am not worried about myself rama you must know only too well that i have the welfare of my angada at heart he is my only concern and not any of the others not even tara he has been brought up by me with great affection and when i die he will pine for me and my loving hands he is young and has still a lot to learn he is my only son and he has never once displeased me i appeal to you to protect him love him as you love sugriva you are the protector of the world and you should take him under your care he should be as dear to you as bharata or lakshmana this is my only request please do not let my beloved tara be insulted by sugriva you should see to it also one who is loved by you who has been left in your care who will please you in every way will rule the kingdom well and he will be able to rule the entire world he can conquer the heavens too it was because i had to meet my death at your hands that i accepted the call of sugriva in spite of tara's misgivings fate is more powerful than anything else rama tried to comfort the dying wali and he spoke many words full of affection he said abandon this ignorance and pain in your heart do not be upset by these thoughts nothing can avert fate and every one of us has to do what fate wills us to do i promise you that your son angada will be dear to me and he will be as dear to sugriva as he was to you i will take good care of him you can 
rest assured that it will be so wali was comforted by the words of rama he spoke again you are the emperor and you are like indra in velar i still regret the hasty words i spoke when i was in pain and when i was angry you must forgive them wali lost consciousness and he lay gasping on the ground Tara heard that her lord had been killed by Rama clasping her son with trembling steps she emerged from the city there was panic in the city and all the monkeys were feeling scared and they were fleeing from the spot where Wali was they were so frightened that they looked Tara with her son in fear and asked her to go away from there and hide herself lest her son should be harmed Tara smiled scathingly at them and said My beloved husband is lying dead and where is the need for me to protect myself of what use is life when he is gone i do not want the kingdom and i am not worried about my son i want to go to my husband and stay by his side i want nothing else she rushed out to the city kishkinda and ran to where wali was lying he was dying and she saw him ओम शांति 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 जय श्री राम श्री राम राम रामे तिरमे रामे मनोरमे सहस्रनाम तत्तुल्यम राम नाम वरानने ओम श्री रामार्पणमस्त